What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports, back again with another one. Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury 2 press conference went down today in L.A. People were wondering whether they're going to even have a press conference. You know, a lot of people were like, man, uh, this fight is uh, coming up real close, man. February 22nd, they haven't even had a press conference. But they finally, both parties finally came together and they had a press conference today in Los Angeles. Now, I think... I'm not for sure, but I'm thinking they're going to do a press conference in New York, but don't hold me to that one. But if they do uh, one for New York, uh, you know, I'll do a video on that one too. But the first press conference, man, was kind of tame compared to the uh, press conference they had before the first fight, man. Them guys had to be separated multiple times uh, before the uh, going and leading into the first fight. This, pr this press conference here was a little bit more tame, but it had a lot of interesting nuggets that I'm going to uh, break down in this video here. Um, first of all, uh, in my opinion, man, when they they did a little face off before the press conference started, they did a little face off, and uh, to me, man, Tyson Fury was a little bit too friendly, a little bit too playful. You know, um, Deontay Wilder walked on the stage like a champ, like a king, supposed to walk up onto the stage, a lot of confidence, smiling, and he stated that in the uh, press conference, man, he was very confident, man. He said he's in a happy place. He said, uh, you know, I'm in a happy place, and he said uh, Tyson Fury is gonna get knocked out. He said Tyson Fury can uh, change as many trainers as he wants. He said he changes more trainers than he changes his draws. He said, but it's not going to matter. He says uh, Tyson Fury say you, you know, he was saying Tyson Fury and his fans say they won. He won the first fight convincingly 10 rounds or two. Ty then De Deontay Wilder said, that if you're so confident that you won the first fight and it's, it's, it was such a, in a dominating fashion, why are you making all these changes? Why are you changing trainers? You know what I'm saying? Why, you know, why didn't you take the immediate rematch? You know, why did you take two warm-ups before you eventually came to the table and uh, signed to fight me in the rematch? When the fight was already on the ta table, the, the uh, contract was already on the table for you to sign 50-50 after the first fight. Why would you do all that if you feel you won the fight in a dominating fashion and the uh, judges cheated you? That what Dante Wilder said. You know, uh, Dante Wilder said, his, uh, look, I'm going to knock this guy out. I'm going to be a little bit I'm gonna be more patient in the fight just like I was in the Luis Ortiz fight. And he's, he's getting knocked out. He says, you know, uh, he says Tyson Fury, you know, talking about uh, he going to be doing uh, WrestleMania after the fight. And he did WWE in Saudi Arabia prior to this press conference. He said he's going to knock Tyson Fury out the ring like the wrestlers do when they uh, throw, throw, throw each, when they throw uh, one another out the ring in wrestling. You know, throw him off the top turnbuckle. So uh, Dante Wilder said he's going to do him like they do in uh, wrestling, WWE. He's going to knock him smooth out the ring. So, uh, yeah, man, Deontay Wilder talked with a lot of confidence. Uh, Tyson Fury had some interesting comments, man. Uh, the lead, the lead me to believe that he's, he's, in the back of his mind, he's not as confident as he's trying to portray. And that's what Wilder said. Wilder says just he's talking good, but he, you know, he's talking a good game, but deep down, he don't really believe it. But Tyson Fury said uh, that uh, he's not worried about Wilder's right hand. That's all he got is a right hand. And that even if Wilder, he said he's got to be a fool to let Wilder knock him out with, with the right hand. Because that's all that he's got, basically. Fury says that he's going to knock Wilder out in the second round. He said he's going to he say he's gonna go head up with Wilder, basically. He said he, he, he told Wilder, meet him in the middle of the ring and let's have a, a fair fight, man. Let's have a fair slugfest. A mano a mano, punch for punch type of fighter. He said uh, in the first fight, he rocked Wilder three or four times. But he didn't have the confidence to sit down in his punches and go for, go in for the kill. He said this time under the tutelage of uh, Sugar Hill, you know, protege of the great Emmanuel Stewart, Hall of Fame trainer and founder of Crunk Gym. He says uh, under the tutelage of him, he's going to be a little bit more confident. He's going to sit down in his punches. And he says he's going to knock Wilder out in round two. He says two has been his lucky number. He says he's been playing cards. Two been coming up. And, you know, two twos, twos coming up in the card game. And he's... uh. Something else, a couple, multiple things happened in his life where the number two has been coming up, and he says that gave him a premonition that he's going to knock Wild out in the second round. He said he's going to sit down on his punches. He said he say that's the reason why he changed training with the Sugar Hill. He said if he wanted to just outbox uh, Wild and just be a little bit more sharp in the rematch than he was in the first fight, he said he would have kept Ben Davidson. So that's what Tyson Fury said, man. So Tyson Fury said another thing. He said if Wilder knocks him out, he said he would be knocking out the best version of, Mike, of, of uh, Tyson Fury. He says if Wilder knocks me out, he'll be knocking out the best version 
of Tyson Fury. So that was kind of interesting comment. Why would you say if he knocks you out? You'd be saying, nah, he ain't going to knock me out. He didn't knock me out last time. I got up multiple times uh, from the uh, right from the right hand in the um, you know in the middle of the fight. And in the 12th round, I got up from the punches that he threw on the right hand. And I got up from it. He can't knock me out. You see how it came up? I got up in the 12th round from that devastating right hand. I'm going to get up again if I have to. He didn't say that. He said if Wilder's... Uh, catching me with the right hand, knocks me out, then he'll be beating the best version of Tyson Fury. So that was an interesting comment for him to say that, you know, kind of like in the back of his head that he know that right hand's coming and he knows there's a good chance that he ain't going to be able to stay out of range from that right hand. And this is another thing that led me to believe that he's going to, he's, uh, he realized that he can't fight the first fight like he fought in the first fight because he know that's not going to get it done because what he, he heard Wilder say, I'm going to be much more sharper. Look at the Luis Ortiz uh, fight. I'm throwing my punches much more straight. I'm not looping them. And um, the guy is uh, in trouble in the rematch. So why, uh, Fury, that's why Fury went and got uh, Sugar Hill. He knows he, not, he can't outbox Wilder for 12 rounds. He knows eventually Wilder's right hand is going to catch up to him and put him to sleep. So he's going to go in there and he's going to try to get Wilder out of there before Wilder gets him out of there. He's going to go in there and he's going to try to land the right hand. He says, I got 20 knockouts and 29 fights, so I got power too. Don't think I'm just some feather fisted heavyweight like Wilder's been portraying me to be. I, I got a uh, power too. So if he if he's true to his word and he and he goes in there and tries to go head up with Wilder, it's gonna be very interesting, man. Uh, Tyson Fury said uh, it's gonna be like Hagler Hearns. So if it's anything like that, man, people gonna get their money worth money's worth uh, paying for tickets to go see that fight and uh, pushing that button and uh, uh, getting it on pay per view. People gonna be getting their money's worth if that's the case. So uh, it was a very, very interesting, man. It wasn't as far as the exciting. It was a little bit more tamer compared to the press conference before the first fight. But nevertheless, it was just as interesting as the first press conference. These guys, you just got to read between the lines and, and listen to the subliminal messages each fighter was saying and what they really, the true thoughts are. And it made for a very, very interesting uh, press conference, in my opinion, man. So it's going to be very interesting, man. Very interesting. Let me see what else uh, happened in the press conference. Um... You know, uh, Fury also said that, um, you know, you know, he gave Wilder a lot, a lot of credit, though. He said Wilder's got a great right hand. He said he hits, he hits anybody with it, he's going to knock him out, you know. He did give Wilder credit for the right hand, but he tried to uh, say he's a, um, he's the gypsy king, man. He can't get beat. I'm going to beat the guy. You know, he kept referring back to the first fight like he got robbed. He said he know he lost. He told Wilder, you know you lost the first fight, I beat you. You know, a man knows when he wins and knows when he loses. And I won the first fight, and uh, judges robbed me. You know, he talked like he was just some kind of robbery. He tried to make it look like only rounds that Wilder won, won was the two rounds that he knocked uh, Tyson Fury down in. And that's not the case. He won other rounds, too. And you look at it with those two knockdowns, them two 10-8 rounds. So all he need to do, that's basically two rounds, uh, two rounds in the bag. Or two, two, yes, that's... That's a uh, two point swing. So I mean, you got to win two ten nine rounds to make that uh, make up the difference twice. So you got to that means Tyson Fury got to win four other rounds just to make up the difference from the two ten eight rounds. And if Wilder won two more rounds besides those two knockdown rounds, then you have a draw. Easy, easy, easy. You know, there's not enough rounds for uh, Tyson Fury to uh, make up to win the fight. He didn't win. All 10, 10 out of 12 rounds. Contrary to what he's been saying, his uh, sicker fail fan said, sickalicious fan said, he didn't win no 10 out of 12 rounds. That's crazy. In the first six rounds, I believe Wilder won at least two of those first six. So, And then you caught the knockdown, and then around here, around there, go to Wilder, you can easily see Wilder winning that fight. Plus the knockout that should have been called a knockout in the 12th round when, when um, Tyson Fury went to sleep. What? You know, put to sleep without the night quill in the twelfth round, and Jack Reese woke him up from a dead count. What you counting for, man? The man is out. He's a chalk out line in the middle of the ring. Why are you counting? No other referee would have started counting at that point. The man was knocked out, put to sleep, and then you count. Let that happen. if that if that shoe was on the other other foot, if Wilder would have been knocked out in that type of fashion over there in the UK, you think the referee would have been counting Wilder? One, two, three, Wilder either way to fight out quick, especially with Joshua. Joshua could have pushed Wilder down. The referee would have probably jumped in and stopped it. That's how corrupt and crooked and in the uh, side, side of uh, on the side of uh, Anthony Joshua over there in the UK that they, they that they do. Just look at the uh, IE, look at the um, Carlos Tocum fight when they stopped that fight for no good reason. So uh, that's just what it is, man. Um, 
Wilder, another thing Wilder said. Wilder said um, that, you know, Tyson Fury, you know, had, you know, contrary to the belief, Contrary Fury was 100% in the first fight. He was ready to go. He had two fights, two warm-ups, had uh, multiple training camps. And uh, Wilder said he didn't have no uh, training camp. He went straight into the fight, you know, after a long layoff in between fights because, you know, he had wasted about months of his uh, time trying to negotiate a fight with uh, Team Joshua that didn't come to fruition. So uh, he said, you know, he said that was the best uh, Tyson Fury you're going to see. He said the only thing he can do is go up and down and wait, but that's the best you're going to see from Tyson Fury. He said, I can get better. It was only 50% of me. You know, I hurt my hand. I had the flu. And that's another thing that uh, Tyson Fury touched on. He said, yeah, you're making all this kind of excuse. You say you hurt your hand. You had the flu. This and that. Bottom line is you got schooled in the first fight, and you're going to get schooled again. That's basically what Tyson Fury was saying, saying he was just making a lot of excuses for his lackluster performance. That's what that's the picture that uh, Tyson Fury tried to paint. So it was a very, very exciting press conference, man. Tame, tamer than the first one, but still had some interesting nuggets in that press conference. Just try to break you down, man. But if you ask me who I thought won a press conference, I thought Deontay Wilder won a press conference. He had the better uh, quotes, which was surprised, man, to, uh, Tyson Fury was just subdued in this uh, fight. He wasn't his uh, active, outgoing self. He was still trying to talk up a good game, but it seemed like it was a lot of fake bravado. He's, he was a little bit more tame, you know, he, he, so that led me to believe there's only two options with him with him acting like that in the press conference. One option is he looking at it like, hey, man, we don't need to sell this fight. He said that, too, in the press conference. We don't, we don't, I don't need to get up here and do a lot of rah-rah talking. This fight has already sold itself based on the first fight. I'm going to go in there and take care of my business. That could be the reason why he was subdued because he ain't really trying to sell it out. He, he know he needed to sell the first fight because coming off that long layoff, most experts didn't give him multiple, much of a chance to uh, to win that fight. So he had to sell that fight. It's either that or he's still having nightmares about getting knocked out and suffering a concussion in that 12th round. He's, he's still thinking about that. He's trying to still think about, man, how, how can I stay away from that right hand? You know, his family was very concerned for him, you know, during that fight and after that fight. That's why, that's one of the reasons why he didn't go into that media rematch. Contrary to, oh man, he couldn't turn down the ESPN deal. You know, they offered him $100 million. That's crazy. They ain't offered him no $100 million. They ain't offered no $100 million. They, they, ESPN ain't like the zone. The zone throwing crazy money around and stuff like that, throwing all that money at Canelo and Triple G. And people like that, and they ain't getting no return on their investment. That's why they about to go broke. ESPN is uh, far from dumb. They was born, you know, they was born last night. Not they was born that night, not last night. ESPN is very smart. They ain't not gonna throw no hundred million dollar at a Tyson Fury who is not known in the U.S. That was just a figure that they threw out there, saying that's potentially what he can make if everything go well with him defeating uh, Deontay Wilder and maybe putting on a fight with uh, Anthony Joshua, he could potentially make that money. But that's not no guaranteed money that he's going to make. That's not the case. But we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what transpires, man. But a very interesting press conference. Uh, both guys made interesting points. But I thought, uh, like I said, I thought uh, Deontay Wilder won the press conference. He was just, uh, you know, brimming with confidence. Very, very, uh, seemed like he was at peace at where he had his in the, in his career, and uh, he just, he just uh, looks like he's a guy that knows how to. He knows he got that power, and he knows how to deliver that power to get his opponent up, up out of there. And that's what he's looking to do against Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is saying he's going to go toe to toe a while. Something that he don't do. He likes to uh, box, be on his toes, slip and move. Very awkward type of fighter. Give different angles. And uh, move around and use his uh, skills. But he say this fight here is gonna be like Hagler Hearns. He said he wants Wilder to meet him in the middle of the ring, and he want to he want a toe to toe fire fight. That's not, you know with him saying that it means that he's saying I ain't confident that I can uh, outbox Wilder like I claimed I did in the first fight. He, you know he don't believe he can do that. So he's gonna go toe to toe. That's why he brought in Sugar Hill. You know fighters out of that crunk gym. They're, they're, they're seek and destroy type of fighters. Thomas Hearns was a good boxer, but he went in there with a seek and destroy type of mindset. He went in there to try to knock fighters out, as you've seen he did with Roberto Duran. And um, as he did, um, with, like I said, with Duran and people like that, and uh, he was able to uh, knock down Sugar Ray Leonard twice in the second fight. Had, had Sugar Ray Leonard uh, beat in the first fight before he wore out, got tired, and... Uh, and succumbed to uh, stamina issues in that fight and a lack of chin. But you see what he did with Hagler. He had Hagler bleeding all over the place. 
bloodied him up real bad. Referee was thinking about stopping that fight before Hagler came back and won. So, uh, Thomas Hearn has been a seek and destroy type of a fighter since he came onto the scene uh, in uh, in boxing. So, most of all those fighters that come out of that crunk gym, Michael Moore was a guy that had good, strong power at heavyweight. You remember the fight with uh, Burt Cooper? That was one of the greatest heavyweight fights of all time. That goes that go right up there with um, Foreman Lyle as far as a back and forth battle. I, I, I ask you, if y'all ain't seen that fight, Google that. Google that. Google that fight of uh, Michael Moore, Burt Cooper, and Google George Foreman, Ron Lyle. You ain't going to get no better uh, action pack, toe to toe battles than that in the heavyweight division. So those guys that came out of the uh, came out of the crunk gym, those guys of that ilk. So those guys, so that's what uh, Sugar Hill has been. Uh, uh, understudy or Emmanuel Stewart up under that type of uh, that style of fighting, man. That's what he's gonna try to implement with uh, Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King. We'll see what happens. We'll see what transpires. But all in all, a uh, pretty good press conference. Uh, like I said, a lot of interesting nuggets. And uh, I want you guys that see this video, man, uh, that watch the uh, Wilder uh, Fury two press conference to leave your uh, text some uh, text to me, man, and. Uh, to me, what you thought about the press conference? Who you thought won, and what were some of the things that you thought uh, raised your eyebrow about what each fighter said, man? Leave your comments in the comment section and let me know what you think. This is JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend. I holla.